folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our attic renovation series. Thank you guys for stopping by the channel. If this is your first time to the channel or to this series, go ahead and check in the, some of the links down below in the description. I've got a couple other videos from this particular project series. And if you hadn't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I got a lot of other car care and DIY repair videos on this channel in addition to this attic renovation series of videos. So today guys, we are going to try our hand at this uh, Graco Magnum X5 airless paint sprayer system. As you can see, we have got the drywall up in the attic. We have got everything taped and mudded, and we are now ready to lay down some primer. Now, for, for no particular reason, I, I happened to pick up this Glidden brand PVA drywall primer. Um, I have seen many videos on, on YouTube that suggest using this particular style of primer, meaning using PVA as opposed to just a regular primer, um, you know, right on the, man, you can't see it, but right on the bucket, this thing is specifically for sealing fresh drywalls. So that is what we're going to do. So I've got five gallons of this stuff. We've got about a 350 square foot space here. I'm going to try my hand at spraying everything in here. Um, as you can see, I've got, well, maybe you can't see it, but I've got everything taped off. Um, the only thing I've got left to do is just tape up the door or put some plastic on the door and then we will be ready to spray. So with that, I'm going to get this thing primed so we can get started spray painting. And from everything I've seen online, these airless sprayers and, and not necessarily um, Graco, but airless sprayers in general seem to be really easy, really simple to use. And I did a uh, unboxing and initial setup video on this particular one that if you guys are interested in, I will have a link down in the description below for you to check out. So before we get started guys, safety is paramount, particularly when you're spraying paint or, or any type of solvent in an enclosed area. I do not have any ventilation in here. So I'm gonna be wearing this jumpsuit as well as a respirator mask that I have, as well as some safety glasses. So let me go ahead and get this on, we'll get set up and then we'll be ready to spray paint. All right, there we go. Let me get my respirator on, my safety glasses, and we'll get this Graco airless paint sprayer fired up and we'll see how it works. All right guys, so I have got the system primed, I've got the line primed, and I'm ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is just do a couple test sprays here just to make sure I get my pattern right. Now, don't get me wrong guys, this is my first time trying out this particular air sprayer, or any air sprayer for that matter. And I have uh, watched many uh, YouTube videos on this stuff, trying to get my, my, uh, my knowledge base down before I try this out. So I, I'm going to do what I have researched to do. I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Do your own research if you're going to buy one of these and use it. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Again, I encourage you guys to do your own research into these air sprayers. And um, so let's go ahead and give it a go. I've got this thing um, ready to spray and um, always read the instructions on your cans of paint. This particular uh, can of primer says that for airless sprayers, you wanna use a pressure between about 1500 and 2000 PSI. So be sure to check the owner's manual or the operation manual of your air sprayer to see where that dial needs to be set. So I've got it set somewhere in between, I'd say maybe 1700 and 1800 PSI according to the gauge or according to the dial, um, which there is no digital readout of pressure for these things. But we're just going to see what the spray pattern looks like. I'm going to kind of get a feel for this whole system, and um, you know, hopefully it goes well. So let's see what let's see how it does. All right. So that's actually not too bad for first spray. You know, I I was I was looking for um, you know some unevenness across the spray pattern. But you know, this actually looks pretty good. Uh, let me see if I turn up the pressure just a little bit. Let's see what that does for me. I, I, I see some, some faint uh, spraying on the edge. Let me see if this helps out any. So that's, that seems to be a little bit better. Um, I think what I need to do is probably just go a little bit slower. So let me try that. There we go. There we go. All right. So I'm liking that. That coverage looks good. I think the pressure is good. So guys, we're ready to get started painting. Ooh, 
All right, folks, that is gonna wrap up the painting with this Graco Magnum X5 airless paint sprayer. Um, I just wanna give you guys some of my final thoughts and um, you know, just from this, uh, these few hours of spray painting, I wanted to give you kind of come up with some of my keys or uh, tips for success. Um, so number one, make sure you have enough paint. I actually ran out of paint and had to run up to the hardware store to get some more paint to finish up, or primer I should say. Um, and then since it sucked dry, I had to go through the priming process again to get everything primed back up and then to be able to continue spraying. Um, so that's number one, is have enough paint. And uh, just for reference, this is about a 350 square foot room that I spray painted everything or primered everything, including that bathroom. Um, and all together, I am on my last gallon here. And uh, all told, I used about seven and a half gallons to paint this whole thing or primer this whole thing. Um, so I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go back to the paint store and get some more color um, for these walls as well. Um, number two, and this is very important, ventilation and respiration. Guys, all I have is a little box fan in this window right, uh, right behind the camera here, and it does not do enough to ventilate this room. So having a respirator, your, your PPE, um, goggles, you know, everything to keep yourself protected and keep yourself safe and healthy while you're doing this is paramount. I, I would actually say that's my first tip and key to success. Um, let's see, number three, number three, this, uh, you know, this may or may not apply to you guys, um, but my daughter's bedroom is actually right below this room. And what I found was that every time I hit the trigger on the spray gun, you know, of course, the machine comes on, it's, it's intermittent, but it comes on and it shakes and it's got some vibration. Um, and not only that, it's got noise, so it's pretty loud. And I have a, uh, you know, some sort of foam padding here on the floor just to kind of dampen the sound a little bit. Um, but the other thing I noticed was that the hose or the tubing, you know, vibrated. And um, my wife called me and said, hey, what the heck are you doing up there? And she said, sounds like you're just dragging cinder blocks all over the floor. So I tried to dampen that sound just by placing a piece of carpet underneath the tubing um, to keep that sound down. It probably did a little bit of good, but you know, not 100%. So um, that's really gonna do it, guys. Those are my three tips and keys to success. Um, and one bonus tip, be sure that you cover everything that you do not want paint on. As you can see, you know, I got paint dust all over this painter. Um, I've got dust all over my ladder, my lights, you know, everything, my drop cords, everything. So anything you do not want paint on, be sure to get it out of the room. And with that, guys, that is going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. If you have, be sure to leave a thumbs up and leave a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think if you've used one of these. Um, but for a, uh, a DIY type guy like myself, I would highly recommend one of these things. Um, you know, there are limitations, of course. Um, this is not a pro-level machine. It is, I call it, probably a prosumer-level machine. Um, but the uh, manufacturer says you can run about 125 gallons of paint through it per year, which is way more than I would use it for. So um, all of that said, guys, I give this thing a big thumbs up. I highly recommend it. If you're interested in one of these paint sprayers, I will have a link down in the description below for you guys to check out. 